If you would like a free newsletter on this or other subjects, just give us a call at Christian Answers. The phone number is area code 512-218-8022. That's 512-218-8022. Or you could email us at cdebater at aol.com. That's cdebater at aol.com. Thank you. Hello, this is Larry Wessels, Director of Christian Answers of Austin, Texas, Christian Debater Ministries. I'm pleased to introduce to my audience a dear brother in the Lord, Richard Bennett, Director of Berean Beacon Ministries, an outreach to Roman Catholics. It is great to be here, Larry. For people that don't know you, you were a Roman Catholic priest for 22 years. Is that right? Please give us a short account of your life. Yes, I was a Catholic priest for 22 years. I was a Catholic altogether for 48 years, having grown up in Dublin, Ireland. I was trained uh, very early on in my education, in what we call secondary and elementary education, uh, by the Jesuits. And then I decided to become a Catholic priest, and I spent eight years uh, in preparation. It was a novitiate year, and then six years to ordination when I was ordained a priest in Dublin, Ireland in 1963, and then one year in Rome, eight years in all. Then I spent uh, 21 years in uh, Trinidad, West Indies, as a parish priest carrying out the, the work of a priest. I had the best academic training you could get finishing up in the city of Rome itself, near the Vatican, and I... I really had a desire to bring P Catholics to uh, what we thought was a way of being right with God so that they could get to purgatory and then that they finally could get to heaven. And I was great for doing penances and sacrifices. And then I was very devout in Trinidad, uh, uh, baptizing babies, hearing people's confessions and doing all the sacraments. It was in 1972, I had a very serious accident where I was three days unconscious after the serious accident. And then after that time, when I got out of the hospital in the sanatorium, I began searching in the Bible for what is true. It took me 14 years of comparing the Bible to Catholicism before I realized that I was dead in trespasses and sins and it was by grace alone that we are saved. I One night I got on the floor in my house and I cried out to God for faith and his grace to save a wretch like me, dead in trespass and sins, and he gloriously did that. It was about two months afterwards. I very reluctantly left the Catholic Church because my prayer after I was right with God by biblical salvation was that I could really love Catholics and give them the real true gospel of grace. That is grace alone, faith alone, and in Christ alone. But then in prayer over those two months after I was saved, the Lord showed me that I could best serve him and love Catholics if I left actually the priesthood and the Catholic Church and reached out to Catholics nonetheless. And um, I, I did that. I left uh, the priesthood in 1985 and uh, reached the States in 1986. And uh, I, um, I just prayed and prayed that I would have a love for Catholics to reach out. I thank the Lord that after one year as a missionary in China, I was able to start the ministry that I now have called BereanBeacon.org. It is to show Catholics the real truth of where salvation is in a person, not in any church. And it is by God's grace, not by any ritual that any church does. So this has been really wonderful. I've seen priests save. I saw two priests in Poland, you know, through our ministry. We have a Polish webpage. 
besides many other languages and of course in English and I thank God that I have seen God's grace poured out and that is my heart's desire Larry that Catholics would know the truth and that evangelicals in this very false ecumenical age would see the differences uh, I have a very interesting article on the web page uh, are Catholics Christians and we've had tremendous response to that evangelicals whose eyes have been opened in reading that article so it's with love for Catholics and to show the truth of Christ Jesus that God will be glorified and many many souls saved particularly Catholics to the glory of his name outstanding that was a wonderful testimony Richard uh, could you just real briefly tell us about the you've written some books and you've already mentioned your ministry but what are these books you've written and how can people find them yes i have written or edited uh, written some and edited others and uh, they have been amazing i just thank god uh, our most well-known book is far from rome near to god the testimonies of 50 converted catholic priests since 1994 that book has sold steadily across the world in english and in other languages and uh, it's on the third edition now and uh, the other book that has my heart really displayed and my love for catholics is the book i've written about catholicism called catholicism east of eden insights into catholicism for the 21st century this book is uh, published by Banner of True Trust, like the uh, book of the 50 testimonies of former priests. And um, I thank God for that because the Lord has used that book and it brought many Catholics to himself by that book. Uh, the other book that my heart was in, in editing, together with Mary Hertel, is a book called The Truth Set Us Free, 20 former nuns tell their stories and that book has been used mightily of the Lord as well and I thank God for the, those women most of whom are still alive and active in reaching out to Catholics themselves and it is just a wonderful testimony of God's grace and the the other book I've written is called On the Wings of Grace Alone I've edited that and that is just 30 ordinary Catholics and uh, what we call lay Catholics and how the Lord brought them to salvation. That is a, an amazing book too. How can you obtain these books? Well, go to our webpage, bereanbeacon.org and just go to the folder on the left-hand side, Books. And when you click on that, it gives all the details of how you can get those books. Outstanding. Well, Richard, uh, we're going to go into uh, showing people your videos now here across uh, particularly our audience on YouTube. But uh, many people don't know that you and me go to the same church here in Austin, Texas. So it gives me a special opportunity to be around you a lot just so we can do ministry work. But anyway, I want to thank you for allowing us to post your videos uh, on the Internet through YouTube and other Internet servers. You praise God and may souls be saved and the Lord glorified. Amen and amen. Amen. By grace Welcome to the program. I'm happy today to be interviewing Andy Mayfield. Uh, and um, like myself, Andy comes from a Catholic background and so I'm really happy to be able to share with him so that we can be able to speak to you about uh, our own love for the Lord and uh, just how you, if you are Catholic or whatever church you go to, how you can know the Lord and how you can come to true faith in him. So it's a real joy to be interviewing Andy Mayfield and I'd like to welcome you to the program, Andy. Thank you, Richard. So uh, I'd like to begin, Andy, by asking you a difficult question, but uh, not just simply what city did you grow up in, but what was the background of your parents and what did your parents believe in? Yeah, I was I was raised in a small Midwest town. 
Uh, it was uh, Quincy, Illinois. Um, what I consider to be a very typical Midwest town, however, as a child and even as a young adult, I didn't, I didn't leave the town much. Um, you know, there were some very distinct things about the town even to this day. You will find uh, at the time a number of Roman Catholic churches, many of which have closed. Uh, they've had to reduce the number of active churches. Um, a, a very large population of, of bars and uh, gathering places of that nature. Um, my family, very typical Roman Catholic family, I have uh, uh, two brothers and three sisters, so there were six of us all together. Um, just a very loving mother uh, who, who held very tightly to her Roman Catholic faith. Um, uh, held very tightly to what she had been taught, uh, held very tightly to her love for her children, um, despite the fact that uh, I was raised with a, an alcoholic father uh, his whole life. He struggled immensely with alcohol and the addiction and the, the sin nature of alcohol. Um, and uh, it consumed him and really left the burden of raising the family on my mother's shoulders and my brothers and sisters. Well, that is really sad. It, it breaks my heart to hear that, that you know, he was consumed and done in by um, drink. But was it in his equally true about your mother or knowing to herself she was consumed with a religion that did not deliver and did not help her and did not, you know, in any way provide what she was looking for. Uh, did she see any of that or was she just thinking that the Catholic Church was all that she needed to, to know God? Yeah, I, it's a tough, it's a tough thing, Richard. Um, I think the reality is it was all my mom knew. Uh, it was every time she reached anywhere for help, uh, it was a Roman Catholic priest uh, or it was a, a family member who would constantly redirect her to the to the church and um, I think the message and it was a message that really began to become pervasive in my own life was just uh, try harder be more faithful uh, serve the church more and uh, and and the church will take care of you God will take care of you so it was really just that immersion in what you what you really don't know uh, that my mom trusted uh, y yes, but yes. was never able to find peace and contentment nor my father yeah did your mother because it was your mother really was the one who was leading here and did she uh, introduce you like as a young boy to um First communion, confirmation, things like that. Did you do that, or did you? No, I was all very. Much, I was raised, uh, came up through a Roman Catholic grade school, high school, so uh, a great deal of preparation for first communion and uh, confirmation uh, with the priests and the nuns. We had a convent that was literally oh, okay. right around the corner on the oh, same. Okay, block so they we were lived. the ones. Uh, yeah. Uh, what are your memories, Andy, of your? say um the first time you went to confession and you know said your sins in the little box to the priest what was your memories of that yeah i think like like so many children um it was something that you had to do um i think as i as i grew older and became more aware of my own sinfulness it was it became something that i still felt I had to do, uh, but it was at a different level because I think the the awareness of sin was there and that was the only instrument, sacrament, uh, where that sin could be relieved, so to speak. Yeah, yes. Yeah, I remember uh, sitting in the confession box having people come to me and young people too and it was, uh, it, it was, um, it was used to be grievous to me. I remember looking at some young people, and particularly young girls, and I'd see sweat here on mm. their cheeks and all because they were embarrassed by what they were telling me. Mm. Uh, and it used to grieve me as a priest where people would come back week after week with the same sins. Right. Right. And uh, I couldn't think that this doesn't work because Holy Mother Church has given us this. 
And I would still say, I absolve you from all your sins in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. In those early days, it was in Latin I said that. But it used to really bother me, mm. and uh, particularly with young girls, and I was only 25 at the time, you know, when yeah. I was listening to young, when they were embarrassed about telling me about their sexual sins and everything, mm. and you had to tell every sin mm -hmm. in confession, and it used to, it used to embarrass me. Mm. I remember sometimes sweating in the confession box, and that wasn't just because it was the tropics where I was in Trinidad, it was because it was embarrassing, you know, it really was embarrassing. Mm. And, uh, but nonetheless, I did it, so I can understand you and the problems you had. Now, what was it like uh, when you, you went to the, receive the communion host and you were told it was the body of Christ and you're receiving the body and blood of Christ? And you know that this is supposed to be awesome in the Catholic Church. How was that experience with you? Or do you have any memories of yeah, it? Yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, I would characterize myself as a very faithful uh, Roman Catholic, as one who um, believed uh, very much what I had been taught. And um, I think that there was always a great desire to, to live up to the, the, the majesty of the Mass, this... this drama of, mm -hmm. of, of, of the Lord's sacrifice over and over and over again throughout every Mass um, was something that I, I tried to, to connect with as a Roman Catholic. I mean, it was, it's at the heart of every Roman Catholic's worship is the Mass. And um, to, 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 try to, to try to convince yourself that that priest up there has that authority to to call Christ down on that altar and transform that bread into into the body of Christ to 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 believe that is a very powerful thought and one that you try very hard to stand in awe of but uh, as you as you grow older I, I can't imagine that there's a Roman Catholic out there that has not deep in their soul looked at that priest and says can he really have that power over the Lord Jesus Christ mm -hmm. can he really have that authority what is his life like is he that reconciled to God is he that perfect in his walk with with God that he has been given that power he had to bring Christ down on the that's altar. right and and I think those are the things that really began to unsettle me but just as they told my mom in her most difficult times, just keep, keep trying, keep bearing down on what you believe in the Roman Catholic Yeah, Church. I have a book of, of 50 former priests. Um, mm -hmm. One of the priests, as, as far as I remember, Sandy Carson was his name, and he was down in, uh, in Florida, you know, and he was, uh, he was beginning to doubt his own priesthood and this power because he knew what his own life was like and that was a turning point in his life and I know that this is a real difficult topic and uh, you know for you the viewer and those you listening I, I know it's difficult but it, it, it's sometimes the Lord wakes us up you know mm -hmm. that that a man can claim to have the power to bring down Christ's body on the altar it's uh, you know it's something that has got to be faced and somebody we have to address so it's a it's it's a difficult thing and it's something we 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 have to deal with yeah. it's amazing that modern american nuns that some of them have addressed this topic and i have a a book uh, that uh, i was able to get published called the truth set us free 20 former nuns tell their stories and in it you see nuns dealing with this and mm -hmm. I, I really thank God for some of these n no former nuns who write their testimonies mm -hmm. because uh, they they're so clear you mean it's a, that they, they, some of them were of course educated as teachers some of them were nurses and everything they were very well educated in the Catholic Church and then when it came to explain how they came to the Lord there was something fresh you know, right. about it and it's it's, uh, it's amazing to see them dealing with 
difficult topics. As I said, this is a difficult topic for you who are Catholic, and it's a but um, nuns faced it, and some nuns really came to know the Lord, and their stories are just warm, warm things, warm testimonies that really can touch a person's heart. And uh, well, I think the interesting thing about the nuns is they they have seen a side of Roman Catholicism that you've seen as a priest, yeah, a former yeah, yeah, priest, yeah, yeah. but but they have seen this what they're called to believe but then they've also seen i'm sure the lives of these human beings that that are called priests and given these holy orders yeah. and and just as when i as i was growing um you you begin to really see the and struggle with uh that a level of authority over the sovereign God of the universe, and and can you they they see the day to day lives of these men, um, and, and whether or not they can possibly have that power. Yeah, that and it, it, it it's so touching, and uh, just before we came to talk to you tonight, uh, it was uh, I was talking to a young man, and he was talking about electronically uh, getting the things out on the internet and everything, and I I just thank God for the internet because we have I have DVDs on uh, on our web page and you will see the web page address on the foot of the screen um, the uh, I just thank God for the internet because I've got talking to some of these former nuns and I have like Mary Ann Paquis uh, her her testimony is on DVD and you can get it by a click you know what I mean by just going to you just go to videos uh, on the web page and then you hit uh, a bride of Christ is the name uh, with a question mark and there is, is she talking on the on the DVD and her heart is warm reaching out to Catholics and it's a, it's a lovely lovely testimony Mary Shannon uh, is another one of them uh, Mary Hertel is a, another one, and her, the testimonies are just really gracious, and uh, you can see them on the internet, or you can download the MP3s, you know what I mean, and listen to them talking. So I urge you, uh, listener and viewer, to really um, make use of the internet and really listen to somebody pour out their heart to you who spent years and years in Catholicism and even as priests and nuns. Uh, I only have one DVD of a former priest and uh, it was it's called The Conversation of Two Priests and uh, it's um, but um, that is very touching that testimony of the former priest too it's on the internet but this is real world and uh, there's many of us who were former Catholics who now want to speak with love to Catholic people mm -hmm. and uh, we, we are not known except here on, you know on, as we speak on the you know through through DVDs and on the internet but there are many of us and uh, you know and uh, it's um, it's good to know about us because you're not going to be told about us at the Catholic Church on Sunday Mass, mm -hmm. and but there are many of us, and I thank God that He uses some of us to now to speak to you and to give you the message. And so I wanted to know, Andy, now to continue in your life when you left home, you know, and uh, you know you're out in the world on your own, and uh, most young men when they get out and they start working and everything, they, they're looking for a wife. Did you, was that your case? Did you look for a wife and did you get married or how was it? I you? did. Uh, I wouldn't, you know, when I left home, uh, I, was, I was just out of high school. Um, I was really the first one in my family to leave, leave my hometown. And, and I really wanted to go pursue, you know, what, what deeply moved me at that point in my life, Richard, was 
a lifetime of watching my father who I loved dearly and I, I thank my mom for teaching me to love my father dearly despite what I now know to be the sin in his life but just the tragedy of the addiction of alcohol that took his life away from us I really was very driven to go and um, get an education work hard and provide the home that I always wanted as a child. Mm -hmm. I was very deeply driven to provide that loving, caring home that my mom provided and my dad provided when we had him and not the alcohol. Um, and that really drove me and, and it drove me towards what I would call now a portrait of my life that I had created and I just went about putting all the little pieces of that portrait together. School, uh, work hard, and ultimately my wife came with that and the children so the, in the house and so that I could recreate this perfect little childhood that uh, I had wanted but my father couldn't provide. Uh, but the love that I desired in that home came right out of the pure heart of my mom. Yeah, well that, that, is, that is good, that is good and that, that is... But I, I will also say what I realize now is that and this is a message to the viewer uh, and to those who have children, uh, particularly young men, I was not prepared for the wickedness of this world and what it uh, is all about in terms of the seduction, particularly of the young man. And uh, I realize that now at the age of 48, but that is something I vividly realize now that I was not at all prepared and what amazes me is the, biblic the biblical view that is provided is crystal clear in terms of what every young man needs to know. Yeah, that, that, that is really good. And we, if, if you could give a little overview of what it is that a young man should know and just it would be good and just how we can get to know that. And hmm. you mean how, because uh, I think for most young men, you know, having the right wife and having a, a home where the really is is probably the biggest question we have besides wanting to know how can we be right with God and how can we yeah. be secure in Christ. I think that is the... So Andy, I really want to know what your advice is to the young man listening and the young man viewing. What is your advice to them? Yeah, I and it, and again, it as I've shared a bit about my own childhood. It is it was the Lord, as I see now, was so gracious even in in the life that He gave me as a child because it is such a a, a, a force that He uses now in my own life and my walk with Him. But first and foremost, I would offer up that Scripture reveals precisely the life God calls us to live and if if you are a young man or you have a young man in your life as a son or possibly someone that you're interested in uh, or you care about find someone who knows the book of proverbs and walk that young man through the book of proverbs it is a beautiful beautiful testimony from god written from a mother's perspective to her son and it reveals all of the things that are wicked in this world, the desire to draw the young man into sin after sin after sin until he can't breathe any longer without uh, sinning. And uh, further into that. And it, I, I, I think it, it permeated my, my walk with the Lord was the realization that I had spent the first 43 years of my life completely blind to the counsel of God and with the counsel of God it is so blatantly clear the filthy walk of my life apart from God well it's good that you bring up that because that is the the more essential question that you're addressing there Andy is, is how can we be right with God how can we how can we know that like the Apostle Paul says you are complete in him who is the head of all principality. But how can you know that you are 
accepted in the beloved, what Paul says in the in the uh, first chapter of the letter to the Ephesians. How did you first of all come to know salvation in Christ? Because as I was explaining earlier on, the Catholic Church, you know, looks to you know to the sacraments and it looks to you know the, these these uh, seven sacraments and all to they look to that and how did you from a Catholic background where your mother was so Catholic how did you come to finally discover that salvation is not through any church it's just believing on Christ Jesus by the grace of God how did you come to that in your life you know I I think this is the um, this is truly for the viewer the question that that one needs to just let root deep into their hearts. Um, first of all, I, I think one has to ask the the more difficult question, particularly as a Roman Catholic, which is, what is truth? And where does it come from? And who has authority over that truth? Um, if you don't pursue the answer to that question, we will continue to be, be led and rocked to and fro by winds of doctrine and thoughts and traditions of men. And it, it, I can say my call to the Lord came at a time where that portrait that I described earlier of my family my house, my children, my wife, all this beautiful little portrait simply began to shatter as a result of the consequence of my own sins and the consequence of the sin that was embedded in our marriage, a marriage that was upside down in terms of the model that God had given us. I was not the spiritual leader. I was not leading the family. I was uh, part of the, 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 the sinner in the family. Um, and I, I am very thankful for the testimony the Lord has given me. I believe it is just purely from the Lord. Um, in the midst of that realization that, that that portrait that I had worked my whole life with, I had my religion in the Roman Catholic Church, I had my wife, I had my children, I had my house, I had my job, and all of it was falling apart all of it. And it was in the midst of that trial that I began to, to ask the question, what is truth? Where does it come from? Where do I go to seek counsel to get through this period in my life? And, and it was in that, in that period where the Lord just graciously began to call me into the Word of God. That, that is amazing that you say that, Andy. It's it's not a coincidence, this is really the, because in my own life I was a, a, a Catholic priest and I was, a, I was nine years into the priesthood in Trinidad, West Indies and um, I, I nearly died in an accident where I damaged my back skull and my back spine and then afterwards when I was recovering and I began to say, what is truth? Mm. It was the question I wanted to know, and it was then that I saw that Jesus Christ said, like in John's Gospel, chapter 10, Scripture cannot be broken. Mm -hmm. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and proper for, for doctrine, for proof, for correction, righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly equipped for every good work, the Apostle Paul said. And I began to see that Scripture is truth. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ himself said on the night before he died in a prayer to the Father, your word is truth, not it just contains it, it is truth. Mm -hmm. this is and that was the first thing that I discovered as a Catholic priest. And it gave me, uh, it gave me a, somewhere to stand. Yeah. You know I mean? And it was going to take me, believe it or not, 13 and a half, nearly 14 years mm -hmm. of searching to, to really get the, the full message. But from the beginning, I had the foundation. Yeah. And that is the question you've asked. 
what is truth and that was in my own life most precious and I'd ask you the viewer to ask yourself the question what is truth can well, we know I, truth and I and I'm just again so thankful you know in that period of my life it was a very on one hand a very troubled time it was a storm in my life that I knew was coming I knew that there were consequences to my own sin um, and and a life of sin, right? I mean, there were, but but in the midst of that storm was a calmness that really was when I sat down with the Word of God. And I, by God's grace, I, I as a Roman Catholic, 43 years, very devoted to my Roman Catholic faith, I had never opened up and read the Bible. We might open it up during Christmas once in a while to read the account, but but never read the Bible. And for, for the Lord's reasons, He called me into the Word and I began with the Gospel of John. So it didn't take very long to, to find out that the Word became flesh. That, those, that passage had deep... It, I don't, I, you know, it just inserted, here's one thing, Right, And then I got to John chapter 4, and I read the account with the woman at the well like I was sitting there with the yeah. Lord. Andy, that really warms my heart because it reminds me of uh, a young man from, from, uh, from New York who was Catholic, and I used to meet him at the post office in Portland. And he, he would, he would um, talk to me, and he would tell me about the Catholic Church, and I said, you've got to read the book of John. Mm. And he would say, well, I have my church, you know what I mean, and who do you think you are to tell me to read the book of John? And He would never listen to me, but I used to ask him again and again. And then one time I was at the post office, and I said to the men there, I said, where's Chris? And they said, he's across in Vancouver which was neighboring city to Portland there across the river, Columbia River. And he said he, he's, uh, he's got colon cancer. So I got the telephone number and I phoned him at the, uh, where he was in getting treatment for colon cancer. And he said, Richard, I have read John's gospel. Where do I go now? <laughs> and it was, of course I told him and it was, it just warms my heart that mm. you said that. And, so go ahead in your own life. Well, I, I mean, the Gospel of John is is uh, uh, it's just one uh, of of so many areas of the Bible that that the Lord used so mightily. But but just going through the Gospel of John, you encounter the woman at the well, where the Lord reveals Himself in all His glory to a Samaritan woman who was not only an outcasted people, but an outcast of those people coming to the well by herself. And he revealed himself as living water. And he told her, and it was as though I was standing there with the Lord, when he said, you do not know what you worship. And he said that to that woman at the well. And it was like, it just hit me like a ton of bricks. Because in my heart already was the question, what is truth? Where is truth? And when he said that to that woman at the well, I knew that that meant something deeply for every single person who read the text of that page, that we should all know what we worship. The living water in John 4, the living bread in John 6, and you begin to see the metaphors that the Lord used, multiple metaphors. And this is important for the viewer in my own walk with the Lord, because Scripture begins to reveal that although the Roman Catholic center of worship is, is the Mass and the, the, the body and the blood, you quickly can see in Scripture that if you applied that, you would see that the Lord is water, He is bread, He is blood, He is a door, He is... I mean, there were multiple metaphors that the Lord used. Every one of them was used, and when I read John 6, 61, 2, and 3, after reading John 4, when the Lord taught the woman at the well that it is 
It is the, the Father is seeking those who worship in spirit and truth. And then he says in John 6, 61, 2, and 3, that it is the spirit that gives life. The flesh profits nothing. nothing. Those words were like explosions going off in me. And quite frankly, at that point, I knew very little about what I worshipped. And it was at that point, in this period of my life where the Lord was calling me, where I went and sought out what the Roman Catholic Church taught me that I never listened to. And it was in there when I held up the truth of Scripture to the writings of the, the canons of the Roman Catholic Church that the two were simply irreconcilable. You could not reconcile the two any longer. And uh, it was just an unfolding from there uh, of my life towards the Lord uh, in Scripture and the circumstances of my life that I am just deeply thankful to my Lord for. Yes, it is. It, 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 it is uh, wonderful and it's heartwarming and it's uh, it's the same thing that woke up many of us. Mm. We saw that the Lord was always speaking in metaphors and. Uh, but he, you know, and, and he always giving things symbolically. And to take one of those metaphors and say this is literal is, 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 is completely taking things out of context and how it, how it, how it always is, in, you know, in, 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 in well, And I think what they ultimately tell us, and John 6 is the most beautiful, uh, you know, just the most beautiful passage to find this, it really comes down to whatever it is that you're seeking for peace, contentment, satisfaction, fulfillment, yeah, yeah. whatever it is, whether it's food for your belly or worship or this or that, Christ is that. He's all of that. Yeah, and he is the he bread of is, life. And, and he, that's really what he, he was he revealing is, to the woman at the well. And he is center to everything, and it is like the... Uh, the jailkeeper in, 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 in the Acts of the Apostles mm -hmm. where he said, what must I do to do, the, you know, how must I be saved? And he said, believe on the Lord That's Jesus it. Christ. It's, I did a word is, search on the word believe in the New Testament Gospels and it's just extraordinary. If you just allow yourself yeah. to go through every place where the Lord himself said believe and read the context, he just wants us to believe in him and him alone. Yeah, yes, and it, it's, it, it, it's, it's so intoxicatingly real, if I could put it that way, that, that it's so, I don't know, it, it's, so, it's, it, it, it's so applicable. And that's why I, I uh, as I was mentioning earlier on, love the testimonies of the former nuns because it's so down to earth, mm -hmm. you know, and it's so real, and it's, it, it's so applicable to daily life and that that's what we we want to know well and i think that's where we started this dialogue is as a young man i see, look back now and i realize that that both my religion and her men and consequently my father and my family never once opened the pages of scriptures to show me this world that we live in and what was coming at me and consequently i walked right into that world of sin and uh i know and that's really sad and i know how you loved your father and mother and it really is sad but it is true mm -hmm. and we say the truth even though at times it's painful you know I mean? I know it must be painful for you to say it andy and i know it is but you say the truth, Christ Jesus said, and the truth so sets you free. Mm -hmm. I mean, and it does set us it free. Set free. And uh, I know it's uh, it's difficult for my family in Ireland. Uh, I think the freedom is 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 so misunderstood, though. I, I think the freedom is the 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 boundaries of Scripture that God gives us to live the life that he's called us to do and that's where the the freedom exists is he's given us it precisely how he wants us to live our lives yeah, and that is so to have a to have a, a directive for your life it's so it's so real that's and it, it, it's, 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 it's 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 so gloriously applicable that we can know which way to turn now when you discovered this when did you actually come 
to personal faith in Christ. Can you can you give some idea when that was? I think uh, you know it really was. It really was a journey with the Lord, not unlike you. You spent 13 and a half years. Um, the Lord called me in the midst of this storm in my life, without a doubt. It was it was in that storm that He called me into just the solid rock of Scripture, which then revealed the true, just pure rock of Christ. Um, but it was probably months of reading scripture in the late hours of the night. I just very fondly remember reading deep into the night just these, I couldn't let go of my Bible. At that point I was more likely to leave my cell phone behind than my <laughs> Bible. I mean literally. And consequently I was in Washington DC on a business trip on June 4th, uh, four years ago, and I woke up at two o'clock in the morning and I had the absolute acute awareness of the wrath of God on my life of sin. Uh, and it was scripture that had revealed that and reinforced that and informed my conscience of that. And I, I began, I, I went to my Bible and by God's grace began to read at Romans chapter 1. And by the time I came out of Romans chapter 2, I was so deeply convicted, not only by the sinful life the pagan life that was revealed in Romans 1, but the religious hypocrisy in my life in Romans 2. And then, thank God, I hit Romans 3 <laughs> and read those words that our dear brothers in Christ for so long has had their heart exploded with. But by the time I hit Romans chapter 5, uh, the Lord had granted me repentance in the wee hours of that night. And I had the most wonderful repentance before my God, whom alone I had sinned against, and um, it was it was in that that repentance that the Lord had granted me just that contentment of knowing, knowing from Scripture, every page I turned to, that I had been reconciled to Him, because the depth of my, every one of my sins had been covered. That, by that, the pure blood of the Lord That Jesus is just Christ. wonderful, Andy. And, uh, you know, you talked about my uh, 13 and a half years searching too. In those 13 and a half years searching, I don't know why, but it wasn't Romans. I kept reading Ephesians mm. chapter 1 and 2. Sometimes 20 times a day I would read it. Mm. And why, I don't know, but it was like the, it was the grace of God. Mm. And I just read it and read it. And then... It was at the very end of the 13 and a half years that one verse, that was Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1, you being dead in trespass That's and right. sin. I sought for all my living as a good priest and all my searching in the Bible, I was spiritually dead. And I literally got on the carpet of my house and I cried out to God. I said, I really am spiritually dead. Give me the faith and the grace to trust Christ alone and to have peace with you in Christ. And Andy, that was profound because I was never the same again. Yeah. And he gave me the faith and grace and I just praise him. That Well, I think it's important to look at that passage in Ephesians 2, 1, 2, and 3 because mm. you're dead in your sins. Yeah. You And Paul says, all of us, right? There's yes, not yeah, one yeah. of us that are escaping this. We're dead in our sins. We are dominated by Satan and the course of this world we are walking mm -hmm. and we are destined for the wrath of God. Those are three points that come out of that, that passage that everyone, every single viewer has got to sit and question, do I know these truths and am I reconciled to God? Because I am dead to sin, dominated by Satan and destined for the wrath of God apart from is true. Yeah, it is. Uh, it is the amazing grace of God, and in in my own life, uh, in thirteen and a half years of search, nearly fourteen years, and then at the end, coming to see what really convicted me was Ephesians chapter two, verse one: mm -hmm. "You've been dead in trespass and mm -hmm. sins." For all my search, for all my 
thinking I was such a holy, good priest for all my um, thinking something good of myself. The Bible says to me, you're dead in sin. So I literally got on the carpet and I cried out to God, give me the faith and the grace. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember that evening so well because I cried out to God in heaven, give me the grace and faith. And then I started to cry out and say, Father in heaven, I trust Christ and him alone. I look to him alone and I thank you for the faith and grace you give and things were never the same again. Mm -hmm. It was, I was free from actually alcohol. I used to depend on that to sleep at night and I was, my life was just utterly changed and it was all the scripture you, that the Lord used and I came to to really see what it is to, to trust on Christ and Christ alone and it was, it was such a, such a joy to me, Andy. And that's what I'd say to you, viewer, God is faithful. God is faithful. Look to him and he will give you the grace and he will give you the, the faith to believe and your life will never be the same again and you will know uh, what Christ said also you will know the truth and the truth will set you free mm. it's not just that you are free from your sins you're free from religion that binds you and you're in the in the scripture and if you go to a Bible believing church it's a fellowship of believers nobody is believing in the church you're just sharing how God gloriously saved saved us and it's, it's, it's lovely as I was saying and trying to communicate that when I hear from you the viewer that the Lord has moved you it's, it's just it's, it, it really it really is a joy to my heart and uh, I really thank God for this and can you have a final like word that you wish to just open your heart to the viewer here tonight Andy? I, I think it would start with scripture and it really reveals uh, my heart and and every person who loves the Lord and and has the Roman Catholic deep in their heart and it's Paul's heart towards the his brothers and sisters and he says for I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God but not according to knowledge for being ignorant of the righteousness of God and seeking to establish their own, they did not submit to God's righteousness. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. And I just, in there is so much truth to be unpacked. But the righteousness that reconciles us to God our Creator is the righteousness of Christ. We will never earn it. We will never attain it. We will never achieve it on our own. We will never come close to it. And the very effort to do that, God says, are filthy rags to me because they reject this beautiful gift of God, of Christ, on the cross, once for all, those who believe. And I just uh, believe with all my heart and soul that God is faithful if we desire the truth and we seek the truth we will find Christ because he is the only truth we will ever need to know and he is, he is the reason for every page of scripture is to reveal him in all his glory as the book of Hebrews reveals well Andy we're coming to the end of this interview and I really enjoyed listening to you and I know that uh, it is meaningful to each one there as you listen. And uh, I want to ask you, what is your walk with the Lord now that you have come to know him? How is, how is your, like your daily walk with the Lord and how are things in, in your daily life with the Lord, Lord now day by day? Well, I, you know, first and foremost, I, I just continue to grow in my love for the Lord. And that is without a doubt... Um, the constant taking in of scripture. Uh, I would truly and, and thankfully um, share that my life is really one that is just 
overtaken by the truth of Scripture and just the desire to reach into these deep truths that reveal my Lord to me in ways that that flow off the pages of Scripture and they apply to every single bit of my life and they are the counsel that I go to in every circumstance of my life I, I find the answer in Scripture um, my ministry really is is uh, in the prison and uh, in the the counseling the biblical counseling of men trapped in addiction the sin of addiction whether it be alcohol whether it be drugs um, whether it be the sins of, of uh, immorality, uh, all those things that young men are just bombarded with today. I have the opportunity to counsel those men both uh, through the ministries at the church uh, as well as through the ministry in the prison that I have uh, uh, to serve the Lord in for the last four years. Um, internationally, our church is, is uh, very focused on, on taking the gospel uh, and taking the life that the gospel produces to these places and have enjoyed the the mission trips to Croatia for the last three years. My heart is very much, uh, it's just very near and dear to my heart. The beautiful little remnant that you find in these places where man's religion has created such a darkness, you find this beautiful <clears throat> bright light of the Lord's remnant, just loving him and following him faithfully. It's it's so similar to my own Ireland. You know, we we were very much like the Croats mm. and in Croatia. We were not only um, Catholic, but we were willing to fight for it. And the the Croats had the Ustashi and we had the IRA, and mm -hmm. it was it was a fighting matter. But when you see Catholics come to the Lord and their hearts opened by the Lord. And to see their love for the Lord afterwards, mm -hmm. it's, it's so wonderful. Mm -hmm. And I, I thank God for that. And I thank God for the outreach to Croatia and, uh, and other outreaches that reach out. And it's just a, it's always a joy and a privilege for me, as I said to you, the viewer, when I hear from you. It's always a joy to my heart. And it's always something that I really relish because this is a personal work. We're talking to you personally. And it's lovely to hear from you so that uh, we can uh, email you back. And that's the great thing about modern communication. So that is that is the the uh, my final word. But what is your final word, Andy, to the one listening there? I think it's true both for the the it, every soul. Um, just seek the Lord with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your body. And He, he is faithful. I, I am overwhelmed every day by the ways in which the Lord reveals His constant protection of me, His constant ordering of my steps, and the constant joy He brings me even in the deepest of my trials today to know that I am right with God and it is through this glorious Lord Jesus Christ is is all I need in life. It, it is. And, and Christ Jesus himself said it so wonderfully that this is everlasting life, mm -hmm. that they may know thee, the one true God and Jesus Christ mm -hmm. whom he has sent. That is everlasting life. It's not just heaven. You can know God intimately and fully personally in this life. And that's what we're sharing with you this day. And that is to be what you look for and you will not be disappointed and this is where we just give God the glory the praise and the worship and the honor may he be glorified and may souls be saved to the praise and glory of his grace Amen Check out our websites biblequery.org this site answers 7,700 Bible questions. Historycart.com. This site reveals early church history and doctrine proving Roman Catholicism is not historically or doctrinally viable. Muslimhope.com. This site is a classic refutation of Islam, a counterfeit religion created by Muhammad. Free newsletters are also available.
Hello, this is Larry Wessels, director of Christian Answers of Austin, Texas, Christian debater. My daughter Marlena has come out with a Christian music CD entitled, Win This Fight. It has eight songs that she has written and performed herself. Some of the song titles are, Win This Fight, Love Song to My Lord, Vessel to You, Waiting to Hear From You, Jesus Is, and Others. YouTube viewers can listen and see Marlena's music video, Jesus Is, right now, free. Just type Marlena Wessels, M-A-R-L-E-N-A-W-E-S-S-E-L-S, in the YouTube search box and click on her video on the page that comes next. If you would like more information about getting a copy of her CD, just email us at cdebater at aol.com. That's C-D-E-B-A-T-E-R at aol.com. Or give us a call at 512-218-8022. Thank you, and may the Lord bless you and yours. To the